Hello and welcome back to another guide for XCOM 2. My name is Saiken and today we're going to answer the ever so important question which um, unit in XCOM 2 is the strongest. Today we're going to do a typical tier rating and I figured we're using one of those tier makers in order to look at the units. The way that I determine strength of the units first and foremost before we jump into it is I'm judging it based on legendary arm and playability. I am judging it on how well the class itself supports the team, not necessarily um, how well it can stack with itself as a class. I am judging the class chassis, so to speak, with regards to their ability to react to game situations, i.e. counterplay options versus what the aliens are doing, and not purely based on their damage. I'm also taking the relatively strength uh, into consideration as each of the classes needs to rank up against the other. And finally, I'm taking all stages of the game into consideration, early game, mid game and late game viability. Before we jump into the classes, because I know that that is an emotional topic and people might have a favorite class, there is no per se class that is unplayable or bad within XCOM 2, the class uh, ratings are simply reflecting the relative strength. Matter of fact, most of the classes are pretty well balanced. Every single class can be played even on the highest difficulty. Some are just broader usable and easier to implement than others. I will assume a good knowledge of uh, the game mechanic when I'm talking about the relative strength so that uh, whoever plays them doesn't make any newbie mistakes. With that, Let's take the uh, frame parameters into consideration, S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, and D tier. S tier, essentially um, kind of the absolute highest strength, outstanding class, A tier, fantastic, really good class, B tier, absolutely solid, great uh, class, C tier, playable, but uh, within limitations, and D tier, not so much playable. I would potentially say that um, uh, down here, it gets a little bit weaker and we'll jump right into it and set kind of uh, the lowest rating first which is the rookie uh, whom i would solidly put in d tier for obvious reasons low hit points lack of any form of detailed class abilities and typically poor aim so they don't have a lot going for them although one must state that it is possible to win an entire legendary Iron Man campaign with rookies and only rookies, so the equipment of XCOM itself can be good enough to carry the game. And that brings us to the strongest class first and foremost, which would be the Psy Operative. Just to set the framing, that's the upper tier. Uh, the Psy Operative itself is by far the strongest single playable unit in the game. Arguing different uh, than that would be a fool's errand. There is nothing that comes even close to the class. Their main advantage, although it seems to be a disadvantage at the beginning, is they essentially have no risk of reaching the highest level. If you invest enough time to train them, they will gain experience without ever being on a single mission. They have a 100% chance of gaining all of the skills and they have an absolute unrivaled kit of class abilities. For starters, they have the best CC in the game. Short of the Chosen, everything is affected by Stasis. Stasis is a one move ability, which means the Psyop can use Stasis plus another ability on top of it. Can also uh, turn um, any form of uh, unit on your side in that might be exposed into stasis. So that is a nice added effect. It works against sector pods, against gatekeepers and whatnot, even against rulers that are almost completely immune to other forms of crowd control. So you can easily stasis them, just get into position, overwatch and essentially watch them melt uh, the next turn. Secondly, they do have mind control, which is an insanely strong ability to completely remove an enemy, but also give you additional agency with another uh, enemy. So imagine it as a one shot ability that kills any uh, living uh, biological uh, being. And on top of it, you gain that as an uh, as a full unit for the 
uh, remainder of the mission. If you go the extra mile, you can um, get a mind control, a gatekeeper that then can reanimate uh, zombies. If you pair that with situations where uh, you, for instance, have lost swarms, you can raise up uh, to 20 plus units on your side. Mind you, raised uh, lost zombies will actually convert to actual zombies that have 10 hit points and hit like a truck. So that in itself can uh, swing the battle of an entire uh, combat just in your favor. Nullens and Void Rift, uh, to uh, continue their use, uh, usability, have high DPS, ignore cover, which is fantastic. So it's just straight up damage. They will be effective against everything, including uh, mechanical units. On top of it, against non-mechanical units, Void Rift, for instance, triggers rider effects such as rupture, life draining, confusion, and even mind controlling can happen on multiple enemies at the same time. If built correctly, the Psy operative cannot die. They do have sustenance, uh, with, they do have life drain, they ignore all conventional status effects uh, thanks to their fortress ability, they have immunity to mind effects, and they even can cleanse um, units around them. They have also the ability to regularly hand uh, turns over to another unit effectively, converting themselves uh, to that unit for one round so they can nicely pick up uh, with damage from units in perfect positions. They do have a good hit point and aim progression over uh, proportionally good compared to others, and they become incredibly overpowered if you invest additional covert ops uh, missions into them. They just work incredibly well with war suits, blue screen rounds, and all of that comes on top of all of the skills that I just mentioned um, beforehand. So in short, the Psy Operative is kind of the full package. You can, and that is seldom run a full squad of six Psy Operatives and simply have the best squad in uh, the game. If they are um, ever out of abilities, they still can uh, fire their weapons. They can use heavy weapons for shredding and so on and so forth. So they are just incredibly versatile and good. Moving on to the vanilla classes, let's start with the Ranger. The Ranger gets a solid B+, and I know, ooh, shocker, how can the Ranger not be further up there? But hear me out before you get into a rage. The Ranger has the single highest damage per target in the game. It has an excellent mobility. Options for both close range with the shotgun and melee combat uh, with its sword. Has run and gun, shadow step, and emplaceable, which allows for fantastic flanking maneuvers and essentially moving back. Blade Master, Blade Storm, and Reaper, on the other hand, allow for melee madness, cleanup, and counterplay against melee heavy opponents. With Rapid Shot, specifically in the vanilla setup without any cooldown, they have unmatched uh, single target damage, and they do have access to two very potent chosen weapons, which are absolutely fantastic the katana. Uh, that ignores some of the armor and never misses, and the shotgun, which has effectively no range penalty or a very, very low range penalty, and therefore compensating for the disadvantage of shotguns. However, the kit itself, if you look at uh, the Ranger, which is an absolutely fantastic unit, offers not much besides damage. It is a pretty demanding class that wants to get actions from others, and it in itself has little counterplay against high armored units or disabling effects of enemies. It has a very limited action economy, can usually only take one action per turn, unless you do have resets like Reaper or Death from Above as a specific ability uh, that you randomly obtain with it. So the class, by no stretch of the imagination, is bad. It is absolutely fantastic, but it needs other classes in order to set it up. And I personally, for once, do not buy into the sentiment that many people uh, preach of an alpha striking team um, that only consists out of damage dealers in order to weaken and kill the enemies. That sort of team tends to have little to no room for error. The moment that you pull a second pack, the moment that things are not going according to plan, and the moment that you are kind of missing those 85-90% shots, you find yourself in trouble because there is no backup plan. So Ranger itself, fantastic, B+, really on the upper side of the B tier, but not more than that. Which nicely brings us along to the Grenadier, the second vanilla class. I would give the Grenadier also B to B+, same uh, tier as the Ranger, although a bit different in what they are doing. They are excellent in cover removal and have massive grenade options. If built correctly with their additional armaments, they come with three grenades plus a heavy weapon, so you can go into a mission with four 
cover removing options. They can also deliver crowd control if needed. The frost grenade comes uh, to mind with the extended grenade thrower that actually hits an entire pack and can trivialize entire encounters. They do have shredding as one of their standard abilities on top of what plasma weapons do anyways. And with the right resistance order, you can even shred up to three armor per shot, which is disgustingly good. They have a fantastic action economy. Once you skill into Salvo, they get essentially an extra action that can be used in order to explode something. And then on top of uh, that, they can do something afterwards. However, they also come with certain flaws as they have very limited consumables. And as soon as they run out, all of the fantastic kind of crawl control and um, removal of cover gets slimmer and slimmer. They do have a relatively poor aim progression, so it requires to set them up from high ground invest into PCSs or training or weapon modifications in order to circumvent that. And they can be indeed very, very strong at lower difficulties because they one shot with their grenades. But keep in mind that on higher difficulties, the grenades do not keep up with the hit points uh, that the enemies will have. So by no stretch of the imagination is the Grenadier bad. You usually find them in any of the squads just to remove cover and make it uh, easier for you to deal with it. However, in the very late game, when the sniper has enough uh, aim, when you do have Psy operatives and when you do have other means to simply ignore cover, then the Grenadier uh, will lose its specific spot and therefore only gets a B plus in this rating. Which nicely brings us to the next vanilla class, the specialist. The specialist gets a solid A. And I know that many people will ask why psych and why would you give a specialist a higher rating than the grenadier or the ranger? Are you crazy? No, a matter of fact, I'm not. The specialist as a class has an incredibly strong chassis that in many cases is simply misunderstood or due to people that take the alpha striking mentality too far, underappreciated, I would uh, say. You can win an entire run without any specialist interaction, and you can be of the opinion that they are lacking damage, but maybe you want to hear me out and see why I would place them higher than both of them. For starters, the uh, class itself has the best action economy of all of the standard classes and short of the Psy Operative, the best action economy within the game. The healing uh, that they offer is a great option to retain soldiers. Costs only one action and with medical protocol, there is absolutely no reason not to use it for charges, permission, any location, anywhere is simply a no-brainer. It is much better than um, the Comet Protocol alternative, although Comet Protocol is not bad either. And with War of the Chosen, you can cho uh, choose to go into both directions. They have an enormous potential for counterplay. Stabilize, for one, offers freedom from many abilities, such as the spe uh, Shadowbound from Spectres, such as the Panic that Sectors and other Psy Operatives uh, can uh, create, such as Stun, which can happen for various reasons, including the chosen when they are tra tra trying to attract uh, information or unconsciousness. And I'm looking at you, Stun Lancer. So they are the only class that can really counter that. They do have scanning protocol, which ca hard counters borrowed chrysalids and uh, reveals chose uh, the, uh, chosen, um, uh, the chosen assassin, as well as faceless ones in terror missions. They do have healing protocol that can easily prevent bleeding out as well as removing status effects like fire, burn, acid and so on. So whenever you need that extra action because some of the soldiers might have a status effect that prevent them from being efficient, that protocol just enables the rest of the team. Ranged hacking allows more flexibility on hacking missions and therefore helps you to deal with tight timers. A protocol in itself is fantastic with plus 20 respectively plus 30 defense and with a two turn cooldown that just comes on top of it. It doesn't even end your turn. So it's just a bonus. If you throw things like threat assessment into it, uh, you quasi get a free rider on top of that defensive bonus and it can stack with other overwatch abilities. So you can essentially give yourself overwatch, um, which procs together with guardian and the uh, and, and other abilities and then afterwards do something else. So that in itself is incredibly strong. Um, the um, 
The specialist can also mind control robotic units or shut them down and can trigger uh, map-wide hacking bony with the advent towers. It, on the other hand, of course, deals less damage and is more dependent on uh, consumables and other uh, classes. So their influence will be reduced once the med kits run out. But all things considered, out of my experience, if you take one thing away from that tiering list, is try a medical spec uh, specialist and run legendary Iron Man, and you will just see how much more flexibility and room for error you will buy yourself just with that one class. Which nicely brings us to the Sniper, the last of our vanilla classes. The Sniper gets a solid B, not a B+, plus, so would be in the same uh, tier as the others. The Sniper is an extremely well-versatile DPS character with a great cleanup potential and fantastic bursts. The highest burst in the entire game uh, with Fanfire and the ability to face off, uh, or Fanfire and the ability to shoot the Sniper Rifle of uh, the Chosen, it can single-handedly uh, one-shot or one-round kill sectopods and other large creatures that are affected by blue screen protocol. And with Death from Above plus the Chosen Rifle or Serial, you can really clean up an entire uh, squad of enemies. Tenentially, abilities like uh, Kill Zone that are more niche can also make for great uh, individual plays of the Sniper. And since it has the best aim progression in the entire game, even without much effort, you can end up in a nice 130 aim range at the end of uh, the game and a really, really solid critical strike range. That all comes at a cost. The sniper in itself is comparably squishy and has a low hit point progression. The early game with the sniper tends to be very tedious as the sniper is, quote-unquote, if you use examples like League of Legend, a hard carry that becomes a lot stronger in the higher levels and scales very well with equipment. If you have neither of that, the sniper tends to often be the fifth wheel that does not get mo uh, much attention. It also requires ammunition, a spider suit, and a good weapon to reach its full potential, so it has a lot of barriers in the early uh, game and even throughout the mid-game to be valuable but once you have a sniper online they can be an absolute force to be reckoned with sniper plus reaper combination requires an actual shout out because it allows you to deal with so many things including the alien rulers without even um, approaching them so that's fantastic sniper definitely an all-around good class and therefore deserves the b tier which then brings us to the next class the reaper the Reaper would deserve an A plus here in this rating. It is by far the best scouting unit in the entire game. With its superior stealth that is incredibly hard to break, it allows to single out and uh, fight individual pots the entire time, specifically for less experienced players, but also for professional players alike. The Reaper offers a very safe gameplay. So the scouting itself, just to be clear, would already uh, position the Reaper in an upper B, or B maybe even lower A tier rate, uh, rating, because fighting one pot at a time in XCOM is so incredibly advantageous. So that in itself, just to be clear, makes a lot of strengths of that class. But on top of it, um, even though it uh, can scout, it also can mark um, the enemy pots, so you can see movement patrols. So it can even deal with uh, Fog of War, with some of its abilities. The Reaper, however, has more than just a scouting ability um, under its name. One of it is that it has the highest crit options within the entire game. The Vector Rifle is a specific case. If you crit, it has a high crit multiplier. And if you combine that with tail and rounds and with a few other options such as um, rupture and so on and so forth, you can crit up to 40 plus damage with the Vector Rifle, making it rather unique uh, in the way that uh, that works. However, the average damage with the weapon is definitely lower. Remote Start and Claymores are literal game changers in terms of upfront damage. If you wait and find the right engagement with a uh, Reaper, there is not much left to clean up 12 damage on an exploding car or a barrel. It's just fantastic. 
and that even becomes better as the game goes by. Banish as a special shoutout is the ultimate one target killing ability which works very well against the Chosens or larger enemies such as Sectopods and Gatekeepers. Now why is the class A plus and not S um, in itself? It also comes at some disadvantages. The Reaper has an overall lack of damage outside of stealth. And believe it or not, it is entirely possible to find yourself in situations where you cannot finish off something, uh, where you have used your sting and where it is not possible for you to meaningfully contribute in the fight without being scouted out. It takes a while, but specifically on longer missions, the Reaper tends to run out of steam. You might also find yourself in a situation where the Reaper has no further options to stay in stealth and hence is limited in contributing in combat. Reapers are hard countered by borrowed, sect uh, borrowed chrysalids as they can spot it out even in its improved uh, hiding stance as well as in chosen with long ranged sight uh, that can spot out hidden units. In both of the cases the Reaper cannot use its main tool which is stealth and once you are in such a situation, you will see what I mean and why the class in itself is absolute S tier as long as it is in stealth. But since that is even with the perfect or near perfect play, not always possible, it gets an A+. Which then nicely brings us to the skirmisher. The skirmisher requ uh, requires a bit explanation as it is a class that lands in a solid C tier rank. And I know that um, some people are a big fan of the skirmisher. I like the flavor of uh, the class itself and it has an incredibly early strong game or strong early game rather with abilities for multiple shots per round as a default ability which then pair well with blue screen rounds or other ammunition later in the game to basically piggyback on the bonus damage of uh, the um, of the ammunition. Combat Presence offers a fantastic option for this class to hand over extra actions to other classes so it's almost like a bond but refreshable and with manual override their ultimate ability that lowers the cooldown it allows to happen up to three to four times in a mission which grant huge flexibility and good action economy. They can always hand that over and then do something else and there are even additional ways in their skill tree to uh, to get further actions they do have a fantastic high mobility great gameplay options with their grapple and their grabs out uh, of cover allow to deny enemies cover to a certain degree with their build in bladestorm they are a little bit of a budget version of a ranger and can deal with enemies that are approaching however there are a couple of uh, things that should be said about the class and why they end up being in the C tier. The class itself reads very well, but the kit does not fully deliver on what the class is promoting. It is supposed to be a damage dealer and at the beginning of uh, the game it very much deals that. But if you look closer, it is prone to very low magazine capacity, so reloading partially removes that whole advantage of the actions that the class gets in the first place. Unfortunately, the damage specifically of their primary weapon does not keep up with the damage potential of other classes by itself. And if you take into consideration actions like Rapid Shot, which deal two times 19, 20, 22 damage with a shotgun and compare that to two times six to eight points of damage, uh, with the um, bolter of the skirmisher, you can already see the discrepancy that uh, you are dealing with. The late game abilities are rather underwhelming compared to other classes. The kit itself is good, but it just doesn't realize the same amount of destruction that other DPS classes can do. Funnily, funnily enough, Combat Presence is the redeeming grace of this class as it can regularly slip into the role of other classes, essentially giving them an action and therefore letting others shine. So although it was designed as a DPS class, it becomes more and more a support class on higher level gameplay. And compared to the other classes, it is a bit pale. Okay, and that brings us to the third hero class, which is the Templar. And I was torn, to be honest, because when I did uh, my Templar guide, 
The Templar was pretty much in the middle of the pack ever since. I probably put another 2,000 hours into War of the Chosen and got to appreciate the Templar a little bit more. And I got to make a disclaimer because the Templar is probably one of the classes that, skills, uh, that scales a lot with the player's skill. So coming um, at the angle from uh, a, a person that knows the game very well, I would give the Templar an S tier rating, which is even higher than the Reaper. Some people will disagree with that saying, you know what, but scouting is so good and compared to the other classes, you know, the Templar has certain problems and I'll start with the problems uh, uh, to point them out uh, really at the beginning. There is a distinct disadvantage of a melee unit to begin with, and there's no denying that running into the enemies can trigger additional pots. If you don't know what you're doing, that will be a huge disadvantage. And I would say if you begin with a game, the Templar probably starts here. As you become better, the Templar goes there. And as you uh, start mastering the game, the Templar ends up there. And the reason why that is, uh, is that there are actually not many disadvantages once you learn to play the Templar. Besides needing to go in and uh, finish a pack, of, or finish an enemy to get focus, you can find situations where you actually can do that with limited to uh, to no real uh, danger for, for yourself in triggering another pack. And even if you would, if you have a backup plan, uh, then it typically is not a problem. Now, coming to the advantages why the class actually makes it into the S tier. So for starters, the class is potentially the best scaling defensive class in the entire game, not even rivaled by anyone. It has an enormous potential to withstand any form of punishment. And if you have a similar game philosophy about XCOM that I do have, which is first and foremost, you want to survive a mission and success eventually will automatically come because you will continue to deal damage. If you do have an option to withstand the enemy retaliation, you have a massive advantage in swinging uh, the tides. With the right perks, Bladestorm and Fortress, they can become S tier unstoppable as they can retaliate onto almost anything that the enemy is doing with 100% of precision, never missing. Fortress making them immune to all of the typical physical abilities. And on top of that, with the Mind Shield, you get full immunity to mind abilities. They have the ability to be a walking mimic beacon thanks to parry, which is an abnormously strong ability because it simply denies one attack. And if you've ever fought against an Andromedon, a Gatekeeper or a Sectopod, you know just how problematic it is to either focus on them or remove the entirety of the remaining units on the battlefield because you don't want to have to deal with the 12, 13, 14, 15 points of damage that are coming in. Well. Fear no more. If you do have a Templar, you're just sitting that out because the Templar is going to take uh, to tank it. On top of that, the Templar can um, solo any given uh, chosen as long as they are not immune to melee damage. And even if they are immune to melee damage, thanks to their psionic abilities, there is a good chance that they still can solo uh, the chosen. They do have powerhouse late game abilities with ghosts duplicating their own abilities, also replicating Bladestorm on top of it if needed. Void Conduit, which is a three round complete CC for any non-mechanical unit, on top of which the uh, Templar regains hit points and Ionic Storm, which is an AOE damage that uh, can deal up to 15 points of damage, uh, even outshining psionic abilities of the Psyops. They do not care about cover. They have a fantastic mobility. And as long as you can manage their focus and know how to deal with them, they are very strong. And I might close the review of the Templar with following um, suggestion or train of thought. The Templar is the only class that ever soloed legendary Iron Man difficulty i.e. completely done the game with just one uh, class and uh, finished the last mission with that. Uh, that in itself is a testament of how strong the class is. And I think that pretty much speaks for itself. Which brings us to the last class on the uh, list, list, the Sparks. The Sparks will gain a C rating from my side. They were memed uh, very often as kind of D tier, but no, 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 no such uh, thing. The Sparks are an all-around fire support and can fill various roles. Matter of fact, 
I would even argue that the Spark is a C plus and at some points with the right setup, maybe even a B minus class. They can easily uh, traverse high ground and reach that, allowing to gain an aim bonus. They have overdrive to allow to cope with problematic situations if they ever occur three actions instead of one is huge. They have absolutely high hit points uh, and can take hits. They have self-healing options as well as extra armor that can make up for their lack of cover. They have Hunter as an ability for extra overwatch shots. So if you're ever scouting without having a Reaper and you use your Spark in order to do that, every newly pack has a chance to trigger additional overwatch shots. And if you ever watched my Rise of the Robots campaign, you will see just how extremely good the Hunter ability is. They also have a built-in shredding capabilities, which make them suitable alternatives uh, to deal with high armor targets. They, on top of that, have heavy weapons, every single one of them has one, and the ability to extend and expand and uh, strengthen the explosion of these heavy weapons. That in itself, uh, just to give you an understanding, is so strong that it was possible for a single spark with overdrive and a heavy weapon to kill a sector pod plus four uh, endgame advents all by themselves. And I think not many classes can uh, claim that. They do not tire out and they do not need to wait or train. Therefore, they will be on missions 24 by 7 and are ready to support the team. They gain experience faster than other units because they are continuously on missions and they are immune to any mental status, including mind control, as well as fire and poison, which makes them excellent to counter chrysalids, for, uh, for instance. However, uh, there are a couple of limitations because now I rattled on like what's so great about Sparks. There are a couple of rather severe limitations which uh, still force them to be C plus tier. Number one, they are limited to out of combat healing. And if you don't really know what you're doing, you might end up with rather prolonged periods of um, healing the Sparks via Shen in, in the workshop. Uh, they cannot use cover and misplacement of them on low ground and uh, running into a trap can be quite costly as these uh, things take one or two hits, but maybe not more than that. They can also not use PCSs, which inherently is a problem. Even more so, they can't use training, which is a broader problem, so no additional skills. No covered ops missions, nothing, no scaling from there. And any form of equipment, i.e. ammunition and uh, any modifications other than weapon modifications are no-no as well. So the scaling of the sparks is limited. However, let's uh, make that clear and I want to close uh, today's video with that. Even if you see C-tier units, the Skirmisher and the Spark are absolutely capable of uh, uh, coping with endgame situations in the Rise of the Robots campaign I ran with those guys, and they were fantastic. They Three, four Sparks, you can even run six Sparks and still have a successful mission. They scale quite well with more Sparks in the team. I personally found a sweet spot with two to three Sparks, which I liked a lot. And the Skirmisher, as I mentioned, definitely is a playable class as well. So don't take the rating too much to heart and uh, go home uh, kind of with the feeling of my favorite class is uh, somewhere lower or higher. But I would very much encourage you to leave a comment down below and tell me what you think. Did I get the classes right? Did I forget any major aspects? Do you uh, see it completely different? Am I a fool for placing something somewhere? Uh, let me know and we can discuss it. Else. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of your XCOM. Good luck, Commander. Bye-bye.